First, position the rolls of EPDM membrane on the insulation. Roll them out and unfold them. Position adjacent panels to allow for a minimum 5-inch overlap. After you position the panels, allow them to relax for a minimum of 30 minutes. However, when the temperature is near or below freezing, additional relaxation time may be necessary for the fold lines in the membrane to dissipate. Typically, large panels of EPDM, up to 50 feet wide, are used with the ballasted system. But smaller panel sizes are recommended during cold weather in order to reduce the number of fold lines. Once the membrane panels are in position and have been allowed to relax, secure the membrane at the roof perimeter in curves. Watch tape number three in this force videotape series to learn how to secure the membrane at the roof perimeter in curves and to learn how to install other EPDM roofing details. Then splice the panels with three inch quick seam splice tape. Here's the procedure for installing field seams with three inch quick seam splice tape. First, use the marker supplied by Firestone to mark the bottom panel of the membrane, approximately one half inch to three quarters of an inch beyond the edge of the top panel. This will provide for a one quarter to one half inch exposure of the quick seam tape. For the first three to six feet of the seam, space the marks approximately one foot apart. Then increase the spacing to five or six feet. Stir the quick prime thoroughly and pour a small quantity into a pail or bucket. Tack back the membrane with quick prime by applying it every three to six feet along the seam. And fold back the top panel approximately five inches. Next, dip the quick scrubber into the quick prime, keeping the quick scrubber level. Apply the quick prime using long back and forth strokes with moderate to heavy pressure along the length of both sides of the exposed seam. Make sure the coverage of quick prime extends at least one inch beyond the seam area in all directions. Continue the back and forth scrubbing motion until the membrane surface is a uniform dark gray color. Always provide additional cleaning at factory seams to remove any excess dusting agent. Do not overwork the quick prime. A full scrub pad should cover no more than five to six lineal feet of membrane. Change the scrub pad every 100 feet or when the primer has dried and has compressed the pad. Allow the quick prime to flash off. To test for readiness, use the touch push test at the back edge of the seam by pushing straight down with a clean dry finger, then push forward on the primer at an angle. The primer should feel tacky, but should not stick or string to your finger. Once the quick prime is dry, apply the three inch quick seam tape to the bottom panel. You'll need two crew members to do this properly. One person to position the end of the tape and one person to handle the roll. First, align the tape against the first three marks on the membrane. Next, compress the tape using a clean scrubber pad and handle. Hold the scrubber pad firmly at the end of this section of installed tape and roll another length of tape out to the next mark on the bottom panel. Keep two hands on the tape roll with your thumbs on each side of the roll guiding the tape to align against the mark. As soon as you reach the next mark, compress the tape again with the clean scrubber pad and handle and continue this process using the marks as a guide. Do not allow the tape to waver from the marks. If this happens, cut the tape, overlap the tape one inch, and restart the tape back on the mark. This one inch overlap is also required at the end of a roll of tape and the start of a new one. Vertical seams can be completed in the same manner as horizontal seams. Now, mate the seam. First, untack the top EPDM panel and allow it to fall freely over the release paper of the tape. At this point, the release paper should extend approximately one half inch beyond the seam edge. If the top panel extends beyond the release paper edge, you can trim the top panel up to one half of an inch. 
if trimming greater than one half of an inch is required, or if more than three quarters of an inch of tape is exposed, you must repair the affected area using the procedure for seam edge repair shown on tape number four of this force video series. Next, broom the entire length of the seam to assure adhesion of the quick prime along the inside edge of the seam. Remove the release paper from the quick seam tape by pulling at a 45 degree angle away from the seam at a steady pace. Keep the release paper low to the roof surface as you remove it and following behind the removal of the release paper by about one or two feet, broom the top panel of the seam. Finally, roll the entire seam area with a one and one half inch wide silicone roller, first across the seam and then along the entire length of the seam. After the seam is completed, all one inch overlaps in the tape must be stripped in. First, locate each of these overlaps and apply quick prime to an area extending six inches in all directions beyond the tape overlap. After the quick prime is flashed off, apply a quick seam joint cover centered directly over the lap and roll it with a silicone roller. Next, apply a 12 inch long strip of quick seam flashing directly over any location where two 3 inch tape seams intersect or where a 3 inch tape seam intersects with a base flashing or curb flashing. Quick seam splices that run through an angle change must be covered with quick seam joint covers. This application is referred to as a vertical joint patch. When you install a vertical joint patch, first prime the area with quick prime. For this application only, use the quick scrubber pad without the handle. Solvent resistant gloves, which you must always wear when you use quick prime, are especially important for this application. Apply the quick prime to an area that is larger than the quick seam joint cover and allow the quick prime to flash off. Then remove the release paper from the joint cover. Hold the release paper on the opposite side of the material and fold the material in half so that the adhesive sides of the material are facing out. Set the joint cover on either the deck or the wall surface and working from the adhesive side of the material, push the material into the angle change. Then, tuck the material tightly into the angle before proceeding up the wall or onto the deck. Continue up the wall and immediately roll the vertical joint patch with a one and one half inch silicone roller. Complete the installation of the three inch quick seam tape by applying seam edge treatment to the edge of all quick seam joint covers or strips of quick seam flashing that have been applied at tape overlaps and field seam intersections. You should wait a minimum of four hours after completing the splice before applying seam edge treatment, but be sure to apply the seam edge treatment before leaving the project for the day. Here's how you apply it. First, apply splice adhesive, a minimum of one inch wide, along both sides of the seam edge and allow it to dry. Then apply a 3 8 to 1 quarter inch bead of lap sealant along the edge and extend it 4 inches in each direction along the intersecting seam. Feather it with a Firestone feathering tool. Note that when reinforced membrane is used, seam edge treatment is only required at seams completed using membrane with non-encapsulated edges. In addition, all vertical quick seam splices and vertical joint patches must be finished with seam edge treatment. Next, the roof ballast can be installed. Always apply the roof ballast the same day the membrane is applied to ensure that the membrane is not displaced by the wind. Typical roof ballast is smooth, washed stone with rounded edges. At a minimum, ballast stone must be three quarters of an inch to one and one half inches in diameter and it should be free of dirt, sand, and other fine materials. In some cases, crushed stone may be used as ballast, but use it only when a layer of Firestone protection mat is installed between the EPDM membrane and the ballast. Concrete pavers may also be used as ballast, providing that a layer of Firestone protection mat or an extra layer of EPDM membrane is installed beneath the pavers. Note that whenever Firestone protection mat is used as a separator between the EPDM membrane and the ballast, the mat must be completely covered with ballast so that the mat is not exposed to direct sunlight. 
ballast is usually transported by conveyor to a staging area on the roof, where it is transferred to rubber-tired carts or buggies. The roof membrane in this staging area must be covered with an additional layer of roof membrane and a layer of plywood to distribute the weight of the ballast and protect the membrane from cutting and puncture. From this staging area, distribute the ballast throughout the roof. In most cases, you can distribute the ballast directly from the ballast cart. But some handwork is necessary, especially around roof penetrations. To prevent damage to the roofing membrane, do not run ballast carts over areas that have already been ballasted. Also, do not manually distribute ballast with sharp rakes or similar tools. After you complete the installation of the roof ballast, inspect the completed surface for sharp debris, such as pieces of metal or glass, and remove it.